Good evening and welcome to Asasa Business PM with me, Kevin Annan. I'm here with my co-host, Rosemary Balami. Tonight on the SDG Hub, we'll discuss the topic, battling enroachment, protecting Ghana's green urban spaces. And to discuss this, we have with us Awola Sewa. She's the founder and coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens, as well as Mama Kwao Akita, who is the director of Eco-Conscious Citizens. Business PM is brought to you in partnership with the Center for Sustainable Transformation, CEST. Good evening once again. If you just tuned in, you're welcome to another enlightening episode of our weekly SDG Hub here on Asasi Radio, your go-to platform for in-depth conversations on pressing global issues and sustainable development goals run by the Center for Sustainable Transformation, CEST, here on Asasi Radio. I'm your host, Kevin Annan, and as usual, I'm together with my co-host. Miss Mary Balami. Uh, she's from the Young Reporters for the Environment, YRE Ghana, a program under CEST. Today we are tackling this critical issue, battling enroachment and protecting Ghana's green urban spaces. Ghana's urban spaces are home to vital green spaces, including parks and gardens, which play a crucial role in enhancing the environment and well-being of communities. However, these green spaces are increasingly under threat from enroachment and unauthorized developments. Enroachment not only poses environmental risks, but also deprives communities of valuable recreational activities and biodiversity hotspots. That's right, Kevin. The battle to protect Ghana's green urban spaces is a pressing issue that requires urgent um, attention and concerted efforts from you know various stakeholders. And so today, we get to deep dive into this issue, delve into the challenges of battling encroachments and explore strategies to safeguard our urban green spaces for future generations. Absolutely. And so joining us today are seasoned guests who are actively engaged in the fight to protect these vital green areas. And they are championing the preservation of Ghana's green spaces. Once again, uh, we are glad to have in the studio with us Awola Sewaf, who is the founder and coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens, and Mama Kwao Akita, who is the director of Eco-Conscious Citizens. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes. Uh, Mama, we've had you here before, but this is yeah. the first time. Of, uh, <laughs> Actually, I've been here before when Ruby was here. Oh, yes. all right. That oh, was I see. a few years see. ago. Few years no, ago. I mean on this show. No, <laughs> yes. 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 I guess. Yes. So you're, you're welcome to the SDG Hub here on Asasi. Thank you very the first much. Time. Yes, <laughs> it's very good to have you. Uh, for starters, I uh, would like you to give us a brief introduction of yourself and what you do. And then after, afterwards, we'll come to Mama as well. Yeah. Well, good evening. My name is Awola Sewa, and I'm a lawyer by profession. But I'm passionate about the environment, and I've been so for many years. Over 20 odd years ago, I had the Isla Environmental Group mm -hmm. where we dealt with environmental issues. Okay. We formed um, Eco Conscious Citizens in 2019 mm -hmm. as a response to the degradation of our environment, particularly our green spaces. And of course, we do a number of com campaigns, and mm -hmm. I think green spaces go with noise. Because if you want a serene environment, you don't want boom, boom, boom everywhere. So we're also campaigning against uh, noise pollution. Okay. So it's our green spaces, and mm -hmm. uh, that includes everything. We're also campaigning against illegal mining and so on and so forth. Wow. So that's right. us. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Mama. Yes. I'm a postgraduate student at the University of Ghana reading MPhil Environmental Science. Mm. And I've been with the conscious for about five years, yeah. from 2019, mm -hmm. about five years, yes. I'm very passionate about the environment and especially biodiversity and parks. I'm also um, the general secretary of YRE Ghana with Rosemary, yes. Mm -hmm. I work with Rosemary as nice. well. <laughs> so you need the environment. Yeah, nice. there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome once again. Mm -hmm. um, I will, uh, I'd like to start with you uh, mm -hmm. as we go into the conversation. Can you please shed some light on the importance of urban green spaces? Well, urban green spaces are crucial, crucial to our health and well-being. Mm. In the first place, we all know about air pollution, yeah. whether from vehicles, from so many sources, we have air pollution. And what the green spaces do, especially the trees, is that they 
it purify the air for us. So for mm-hmm. starters, the green spaces are purifying the air. And also, we know that they make room for uh, so many species. Yeah. But in addition to that, they help our health and well-being. You sit there and the whole serenity. Mm. And that was why the good Lord put us in the Garden of Eden. He didn't put us in a concrete jungle. Yeah. And also, mm-hmm. we need the green spaces. Just imagine there's an earthquake. Where are you going to run to? So you need the green spaces in cases of earthquakes where you have a safe place to go. Mm. And of course, there's flooding as well. What the green spaces do is that they soak up the excess water. So they have multiple benefits, but primarily our health and well-being. And that's why the good Lord puts us in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mama, is there anything you'd like to add to that on the importance so of urban, said, urban uh, space? Good health and well-being. So... SDG 3 mm-hmm. and this is the SDG hub. Exactly. When it comes to mental health, green spaces also play that role. Oh, you get wow. socialized with people, mm. not staying indoors the whole time. When it comes to noise, you need somewhere quiet. Yeah. After a long day's work, you need to go somewhere quiet. We have parks, you have um, a, big, um, a big botanical gardens, garden. you have mm. um, Ligon botanical gardens, you have parks and gardens, places where people meet, interact. So it improves your health. You need a place to go for jogging, Mm -hmm. exercise. There are parks around. But Ghana, it's a challenge. Even our parks, the little or the small spaces we have, we are selling them (laughs) or converting them into various forms. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, So let's talk about enroachment. Mm. Uh, As a conservationist, how serious is the threat of enroachment to Ghana's urban green spaces? It's a very serious threat. I mean, if you go to what used to be town and country planning, you find out that every area has a green space. Mm. Cantonments, Laboni, Joel, wherever, there's a green space. Yeah. But look at what we see on the ground. We haven't kept to anything, and we've had haphazard development, and we've built on our green spaces. And this is just not a good thing to do we've talked about the importance of our green spaces that every area you know some people may be blessed to have beautiful gardens where they can go with their family and friends and enjoy the green space and do all the things that um, green spaces um, are there for but that's not the situation for everybody that's why in every sensible country where there are settlements there's always a park but unfortunately uh, we've been let down by our authorities They have allowed individuals to build on our green spaces and they have done absolutely nothing about it. Regarding eco-conscious citizens, our first campaign was, um, apart from the, we had previously campaigned against illegal mining, but one of our first campaigns was parks and gardens. When we found out that this fantastic idea of our first president that is to have parks across Ghana, Mm. not just in Accra but in all the regional capitals to have parks and the raison d'etre of parks and gardens was also to beautify our green spaces and to acquire lands for green spaces and then we find out that that very place there was a an attempt to build a multi-story office building on a green space i mean who Mm. does that and just to give you a bit of history uh, Parks and Gardens was established in 1961 as a department. Okay. Later on, it became a uh, ministry mm. and uh, cabinet minister, Okansi. Mm. But after the 66 school, it went back to being a department and is currently under the Ministry of Local Government. Okay. And it was the same Ministry of Local Government which was attempting to build or getting a developer to build a multi-story office building oh. on Parks and Gardens land. So you could say that the firefighter was acting as an arsonist. And that mm-hmm. is really not on. But thanks to God and the media, we got a lot of media exposure. We had campaigns and so on and so forth. We managed to put an end to it in 2019-20. And now we're in 2024 and uh, it started again. It was an election year. So we were almost, almost mm. in an election year. And the same thing is happening it's this happening. year. So 2024, the same issue. The same issue. Mm. Yeah. And this one is by an estate developer mm. who I think is a pastor. Is it, um, well, it's an estate uh, de- uh, developer, Danny Ike, uh, estate developers. And there's one a uh, Reverend Ezekiel, who is the one who is sort of fronting mm-hmm. the whole thing and pushing it. But we have said that it cannot happen. It's yeah. a green space. Most of our green spaces are gone and we're not going to sit down and allow 
this green space to be taken over by an estate developer. I mean, look at the irony of it. A green space, where most of our green spaces are already gone. Why would we as sensible Ghanaians sit down and allow um, an estate developer, Mm. a private person, to take over a public space, a public green space? That's certainly not on. Not on, indeed. So you'd say gentrification is a big problem? Well, you see, it's it's bigger than that. Because, you see, you're supposed to have... um, um, planning, mm-hmm. you know, so we are supposed to, when we are planning, we know that this is for a market, this is for a hospital. You don't just build haphazardly. We are somewhere known as the spatial planning, um, land use, <laughs> land use and spatial it's planning authority. authority. Thank yeah. you very much. So they come in, they know that here is designated for this and that. But what happens is that we just build anyhow, anywhere. And then when it comes to public lands, the Lands Commission mm-hmm. has a case to answer yeah. because they should not be given out public lands when they know very well that this, the use, for example, you have a green space. Mm-hmm. How would you supervise the giving of a green space to an estate developer? Yeah. It doesn't work anywhere in a sensible country. So they have a, um, a case to answer. answer. Indeed. So what I'm saying is that if you want a country not to be developed in a haphazard way Mm -hmm. where you have mixed areas what does that mean Mm -hmm. you're supposed to have residential areas you're supposed to have commercial areas you're supposed to have business areas and the reason industrial areas the reasons why you separate is that things are different in the industrial area the noise levels will be different from those of a residential Mm -hmm. area so how do you have mixed use but because we haven't wanted to follow regulation we haven't understood independence it doesn't mean that you you put all your laws aside Mm -hmm. that that is not what it's about you adhere to laws and regulations which is one thing i think we are allergic to in this country Mm. indeed so now we've seen calls by eco-conscious and other cso's on these parks and garden issues um, can you provide us with an overview of the recent allegations regarding the lease of you know parks and gardens? Is it the one in Ghana, in Accra, or yes? We are think okay. Let's be absolutely clear. Mm. All over Ghana, wow. all over Ghana, in Wa, for instance, apart from that's residential serious. buildings on parks and gardens land, they're actually building a petrol station. Wow! I mean, who goes and builds a petrol station on a green space? But that's what's being done in Wa. I know wow. from the director of parks and gardens that it's everywhere. Whether it's Takwa, mm. whether it's uh, Kumase. All our parks and gardens in Ghana are under siege. Yeah. But coming back to Accra, the headquarters, and by certificate of allocation, 10.8 acres were acquired by the colonial government in 1952 mm-hmm. for a horticultural garden. Okay. Or shall I say nursery, horticultural mm-hmm. nursery, 1952. And then when uh, um, our first president came to power in 1961, he established what you call the Department of of parks and gardens Gardens, and the 10.8 acres were transferred to the department of parks and gardens Gardens, mm. now this developer is claiming 2.1 something acres but how does he claim land which was allocated first of all to the ministry of agriculture Mm. by certificate of allocation you can't just get up and take it if you remember um, to digress a bit, when it came to Achimota Forest mm-hmm. and parts of it wanted to be taken, yeah. an executive instrument had to be passed, right? Yes. So you cannot just do it. There's a legal process. Procedure. You have to go to parliament. Mm. So all these have been laid aside and he's had the impunity to take parks and gardens to court. Oh, wow. Yes. So Danny mm. Ike um, estate mm. developers have had the impunity, the audacity <laughs> to <laughs> take shall, parks and gardens we, to shall court. Shall we avoid mentioning names? Okay, let's avoid mentioning names. So yes. parks and gardens have been taken to court and it's a public, it's, it's a public, um, uh, public information. Okay. It's not okay. a secret. Okay. If yeah. you go to the Out courts there. today, it's of public, oh, okay. uh, you know, it's not, it's the public domain. It's yeah. not in the private domain. So it's not a secret. It's mm. something that's open, you okay. know, a court cases. A public, a public. Uh, well, then it's, it's open right. information. It's open list, information. Yeah. So okay. we, we are not trying to say anything here that is a private matter. It's open information. Okay. They've been right. taken to court. Any public person has a right to see the writ okay. because it's a public. It, and parks and gardens, it's, a, it's not a private, a private person. Yeah. Okay. So it's in the air. It's in the open. Okay. Yes. Great. Thanks for that clarity. So Akita, how does uh, encroachment on urban green spaces impact the environment in local communities? So I think I will have mentioned when it comes to air quality. Mm-hmm. We're talking about sustainable cities and yeah, communities, and communities, your health. Mm. If you're in an, in an environment which is um, uh, concentrated with buildings, mm-hmm. no trees, no open spaces, 
There'll be lots of pollution. Mm-hmm. The vehicles, the exhaust, um, dust in the air. Yeah. Open spaces purify the environment. Mm-hmm. They purify the air. They improve the health of the air. In the air. It's also a hub for biodiversity. You get a lot of um, insects around. I know that insects, for example, butterflies, mm-hmm. tell you that, yes, it's um, an indicator of an, um, a healthy environment. Okay. So some in, all insects are indicators of a healthy environment. Right. They tell you what is going on at a particular place, mm. at a particular time, whether there's a water source, there are butterflies. So when you don't that, see them, when you don't see them, the that should tell you that there's, even when there's degradation, mm. there are some butterflies that you find around. We should tell you that, no, listen. There's degradation taking place somewhere. somewhere. So mm. open spaces play very crucial when it comes to improving mental health, socialization. All these spaces are very important. But in Ghana, if you are not going to church or you are not at home. Or the mall. Or the mall. <laughs> but a green space, I mean, it's a very quiet place. Is it because we haven't understood the concept of, you know, I'm, I'm actually feeling, having a feel of nature. Because even when you have, when these real estate developers are, you know, building, they don't even take into consideration all these all things. These things. Yeah. But some do. Mm. Because I remember in school, mm. we, we went to some green spaces and we sent um, La Wireless Cluster of Schools mm-hmm. to um, Parks and Gardens. Mm. Okay. And they really appreciated We also brought them to Asante Singh Garden. It's a private garden. Oh, okay. And they really appreciated the whole place. And they wanted to come back. Some have been seen green spaces before. But once you introduce them to it let them have a feel of it let them experience the whole oh, area mm. they'll get to appreciate it and tell others about it and they indirectly become ambassadors yeah and sure. educate other people about it. but here in ghana our education system is also a little bit mm. um tight so it doesn't <laughs> allow you to do things that you'd want to do, do. So, yeah yes <laughs> and still on you akita uh, what has eco-conscious citizens done in response to the enrichment uh, on parks and gardens land Okay, so with the 2019-2020 um, issue at Parks and the same Parks and Gardens, mm-hmm. we got people to sign a petition. We sent it to the, we handed it over to the president. We got a member of parliament to ask a question in ask a question in parliament mm. why the land was being given out or there were plans to develop on that land which wasn't meant. It's a green civic area. Right. And so, yes, it's known as Green Civic. It's green it's civic. zoned as Green Civic. Green oh, okay. Civic. Mm. So they have the original building. They have a whole area for all that they have to, and people go there to use it. Use it. Mm. So, I mean, that's one thing we did. How many people signed the petition? Well, we got yeah. almost 4,000 4, signatures. That's a lot. Yes. But if I might add what has already been said. So we first of all went to the Attorney General's Department mm-hmm. to find out what was going on. Then we went to the Ministry of Local Government, yeah. and eventually the petition was handed, as has been said, mm-hmm. to the um, Office of the President. And uh, we also went to the Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority mm-hmm. because the, there was an attempt to have the area rezoned okay. from green civic to um, exclusively civic. What was the but, difference? Well, the difference is that if it's exclusively civic, you don't have to have a single tree there. Oh, okay. When it's green civic, the green suggests that mm, you must have some trees there. Okay. But if you make it exclusively civic, civic, then you can build your, as we see so many buildings paved everywhere, yeah. not one single tree like you were talking about, yeah. you know. Recently, somebody set, sent us some, an estate somewhere, mm-hmm. beautiful houses, but to me they were ugly because there wasn't a single tree. tree. Wow. You know, there's a saying at Parks and Gardens that a home without a tree is charmless. Mm-hmm. You know, so we do need the trees. Yeah. Not uh, In addition to purification also, they add some beauty. Mm-hmm. So all these things were done, and I have to say, commend Lupsa because they were very bold, and they said that the area is a green zone. Yeah. It's being used by Parks and Gardens as a horticultural nursery as the original aim of the land mm. and therefore they couldn't assist in rezoning the place mm-hmm. however if you wanted to do that you would have to go to parliament and that they, they make clear that there's a law and the yeah. laws had to be um, conformed course, so yeah. they did very well and the area wasn't uh, rezoned, rezoned okay. but as has been said today it is under threat again. again but on saturday for instance we went to parks and gardens there's a fair there every first and third uh, Saturday. Okay. So we were there on Saturday the 4th, just raising awareness of what most people didn't know, letting them know what's going on, yeah. that this place not, a, not you know, it's a big place, mm-hmm. so it's the area closer to the Russian embassy that's oh. under threat. Yeah. But it's still parks and, parks gardens, and gardens, so raising yeah. awareness and letting people know that you have a voice and you can add your voice to the campaign that's ongoing. Wow. So right. apart yes. from that success story, the same land which we protected, mm-hmm. the trees from the um, 
um, the cathedral sites okay. mm -hmm. they were moved and replanted at that same zone. Oh, okay. So now the trees are there. Where they were building the national cathedral. Yes, they didn't yes. want to just sell all the trees, trees. Oh. especially with people talking mm, about Philly. Yeah. So you know there's a method. You, it's quite expensive, but you can sort of um, dip, dig very deep, deep. Oh, and then roots. get the trees out, out. And then they were planted oh. at the nursery. Mm. And ironically, when they were taking the um, trees there, you know, the wall that had been built by Parks mm -hmm. and Gardens, they damaged it because they had to bring the yes. trees in. Mm. And that's where the encroacher used mm. to get to Parks and Gardens and wow. take two containers there. <laughs> and we managed to remove, one container was removed by Parks and Gardens. Mm. And in the process of removing the second one, you know, he came with uh, heavily built persons. And in the end, the, it became a police <laughs> matter. Oh, wow. Yeah, but the police intervened. Serious. The police intervened. Yeah. They were very professional. Mm. And... Uh, all parties were asked to bring their documents. documents mm. So the wall has since been repaired by Parks and Gardens. Okay. 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 I was I was coming to some of the challenges that you had faced, but <laughs> since you mentioned <laughs> some of them. Sorry about but, that. Yeah, okay. that's, that's fine. But are there any other challenges yes. you faced oh, with, while, the challenges, with, with your work so far? A lot of people aren't aware of the importance of green spaces. So when it comes to sometimes even signing a petition, yes. people hesitate. Yeah. And even we've had some media personnel or journalists being threatened because they report on such issues. We've had a lot of them contacting Awula. Is it? Yes. Wow. Really? So a lot of them, <laughs> don't. some don't want to do um, any story on environmental galamsey yeah. and all these other they issues. They're being but threatened. Yes. Oh, you didn't get, we had a press release out on International Press, press Day, you yeah. know, and we did mention that, we didn't mention the names of the journalists, mm -hmm. but we yeah. did say that journalists had contacted us and had told us about the threats they had faced when they had reported stories about illegal mining. If you notice, mm -hmm. um, Sir Sam Jonah mm -hmm. asked why Galamse wasn't in the public uh, uh, um, in the public any longer. I know there was a time when Galamse, really Galamse. Yeah. So he asked why is it, and we are saying that it's quite simple. The journalists, some of them are being threatened, and they are wow. serious threats. And let's face it, a journalist has been murdered before. Mm -hmm. So some of them, after publishing stories, and uh, the perception is the perception is that highly placed persons are involved. Mm. So when you write a story, you get phone calls. And very recently, an assembly member, not a journalist, mm -hmm. an assembly man in um, Enyase in uh, oh, Enzima, mm -hmm. he um, had been reporting to the police that there was illegal mining going on. Mm. The police had taken no notice. So together with a group of uh, citizens, they effected what you call a citizen's arrest. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything illegal. They went exactly according to the book, arrested illegal miners who happened to be Chinese and Ghanaian, wow. and took them to the police station. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he's receiving death threats. He's being threatened. This is serious. Yes. <laughs> wow. so, yeah, these are just a few. some of the challenges. These are some serious challenges. Yeah. <laughs> but how do, how do we overcome them? Yeah. I would say that we have to overcome them by... First of all, you make a formal complaint to the police mm -hmm. and the IGP needs to act and let its officers know that these are serious complaints and they should be taken seriously. Obviously, he has to watch over his shoulder. The residents need to be uh, patrolling with him so that he doesn't walk alone yeah. when he's going. So they can do neighborhood watches over his house. This time to this time, this group of people, this time to this. And then if the IGP makes it clear to the police that if anything happens to them, to the threatened person, they'll be held accountable. I think there'll be some degree of seriousness in protecting, in protecting. journalists who are trying to, because what is the duty of journalists? To so unearth information and yes. bring it to yeah. the public, public domain. Yeah. And if in doing your work, you're being threatened, and then we don't stand in solidarity with, with, with the journalists, then mm -hmm. we are also to blame. Yeah. So we've called on citizens to stand in solidarity with journalists who are doing their job for our benefit. Indeed. So let's um, let's just look at the policy aspect. How can urban planning and development policies be modified to prioritize the preservation and enhancement of green space in Ghana cities? I will, uh, well, I would, I'll take that we have very good laws. You see, it's not the absence of laws that's the problem in Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's the enforcement. Mm -hmm. So we have all the laws we need. We don't have to pass any additional law. What we need to do is just to enforce the current laws. Mm -hmm. For example, we're not supposed to build on every inch of your land, pave everywhere. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to do that. The law indicates that you can only build on a certain radius of your land mm -hmm. because you need to have air rotation. If yeah. you build in everywhere, how is the air going to rotate? You're supposed to plant trees. So when you're getting your building permit, or when you're applying for your building permit, these things need to be looked at. But, you know, 
our systems are not working. working. The problem with Ghana is not the absence of laws. laws. It's the enforcement of laws mm. and the human beings who actually ensure that our laws are abided. abided. <laughs> Shall I say we, buy, we abide, abide by our laws. laws. Yeah. And that is the <laughs> crux of the matter. Wow. I see, uh, this is a very interesting very, conversation. Very interesting. But <laughs> unfortunately, our time is almost up. opening as well. Yes. Yeah. Time has gone by very fast. And this is all the time that we have for today. So... We would like to thank our guests, Awola and Akita, for their valuable insights on this crucial topic. And also thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Remember, preserving green areas isn't just about trees and grass. It's about sustaining life, fostering community, and safeguarding our future. So please tune in same time next week as we continue discussions on all things sustainable development right here on Asasi Radio 99.5 so that people and the planet can prosper. If you have any topic you want us to discuss, please share with us and shoot an email to sdghub at cestint.org. Remember, dear listeners, to keep raising your voices, keep advocating for change, and keep tuning in to the SDG Hub for more insightful conversations. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and keep advocating for a greener, healthier planet. And that's a wrap on the SDG Hub. Thank you for staying here with us. Uh, we've been speaking with Awola Sewa, founder and coordinator of Eco-Conscious Citizens, and Mama Kwao Akita, director of Eco-Conscious Citizens. I've been your host, Kevin Anan, and I did this with my co-host. Rosemary Balami. We go back to Caleb. <laughs>